here for a ductless mini split that is not heating it's not responding they're saying so let's get up here and take a look at it and see what we get into I got troll bola pushing their car right there <laughs> start with the batteries No response. Let's go upstairs and check for power. Okay, so we checked the batteries, we set the clock on the thermostat, and we're getting no response at the upstairs unit. So I'm gonna grab Tippins here. Mr. Tippins. Here's a little more cow tip. How many guys put waters in your truck? You know, stay hydrated. A little more cow tip of the day there. Um, yeah, I think just just Tippins. You know what? I think I'll put the knee pros on too. I ain't getting any younger. And uh, that's for sure. And then we'll, we'll get up on the roof here. she is back there I can see her okay oh yeah you guys seen that have you guys seen this trick before where I do this I'll take my shoulder strap to tie off the ladder let's see if I got anything that'll make it today Wrapped through my ladder, it was short, so I just got some tie wraps. Something's better than nothing, right? I got something on there. It is a little bit windy today, so let's get over here to this Mitsubishi. All right, so I'm here at the unit. Uh, start, you know, with the basics. Let's see if we got power up there. So the GFI's got power. I can see the light on the service plug. It's a nice disconnect with the service plug. I like that. This is a little 24,000 BTU. And uh, I'll check for voltage up here and then we'll check our fuses. get my alligator clip to hold on. Here we go. That fuse is good. That fuse is good. We can get onto the voltage side of things. I'll take the alligator clips off. I just run those standard. And we'll go to the selection of volts. Make sure we're on AC volts. 208, 230 single phase. We got 241 volts. So the voltage is good. Let's make sure this is seated in there fully. Because it came out real easy. And that is in the on position. Now we'll ch we can check for voltage here at inside our unit. I know I joke around the Tippins bag a lot, this bag, because it tips over a lot, but I really do like this bag better than the other ones. Because it has the Velcro pouch, you don't really have to use the zippers. 
so let's see what we're getting into here that should be it pull down pull out Mitsubishi always does a good job with that okay we're still on volt AC Go ahead and see what we got coming in. 246 volts. Okay. Ooh, something's going down out there. So we got voltage to the unit. Let's go ahead and pull the top off and we'll check the main fuse on the PC board, see if it blew. We'll follow the train on down the line here. So on this part, I don't know if you guys can see down there, but I did pull the fuses, so there's no power up here. And you do need to wait a, a, a good while of time for these things to decharge. Because the capacitors will hold a lot of voltage for a long time on a mini split. Look at that Mitsubishi. You can see a bunch of, bunch of goodies right here. Spider webs. And we'll go ahead. We'll see about. I like to get this out of the way. Keep all my screws in one spot. Tips worn out. I think I got some freshies on the truck. Now you gotta lift up, push down on this one, and then lift up on the how the tabs tie in, so you can get some more room to get in there, me in. See, she's coming, coming apart. You gotta take the puzzle apart if you're gonna play. Don't lose your screws. Hey, looky there. See, it's a nice little, nice little opening. Oh, maybe. Can't tell if that looks burnt or not. We're gonna have to check them with the meter. That one looks, the one up here looks good, but we, we'll have to ohm it out. One up here, here, and here. And I'm not, oh yeah, I'm not seeing any others. And then, uh, oh yeah, right here is another fuse, couple fuses right off the main lines. You got these two right here. This one and this one. Right off your main lines, right off the terminal block, see? Power in. That's going to talk to the downstairs. Blue and brown coming in. Where's the, what do I do with the meter? Oh yeah. Usually when you when you power up one of these units, 
you will hear the electronic expansion valve index and it'll give you a bunch of ticks and clicks. Um, and I don't think I heard that on this one. All right, we're going homes. The little Unity actually has a good, nice, loud alarm. Let's listen. Okay. Good, good. Let's check this guy. That one's good. Oh, the one up here. Good. And then I'm gonna check these two guys down here. We could just go like this to check across. That one's good. Put them back as you go. Just keep yourself out of trouble. Okay, and then this guy. All right, not seeing any blown fuses right in front of my face. That's for sure. Let's carry on. Okay, so I've checked the fuses. Uh, for me, depowering it and then powering it back up, checking stuff. I had asked the customer earlier in the day to reset the breaker. I don't think they did. I do have an LED light now. Um, and I'm wondering if the power cycle reset the unit. So what I want to do is I I, uh, I got the cover back into the slots that, that hold it back together. And I did put a screw back into this mounting bracket. Uh, and I'm going to slap the top on. I'm not going to put all the screws back in yet. So I want to go see if the unit will cycle now. And then if it does cycle, I don't want the condenser fan to come on and destroy itself. So I think I need to put one more little retainer right here. Just for testing purposes. And we'll go back downstairs and we'll cycle that thermostat and see, see if we get any action downstairs. And uh, we can lift the cover up too and see if there's any codes on the inside unit or LEDs but it might fire back up. And what'll happen a lot of times with these units, when you get, we had a storm come through and you get power glitches and they need to be reset. And the reset is to kill the power to the outdoor unit and then reestablish power to the outdoor unit. Let's, it might just be that simple. Let's go take a look. Okay, so I'm getting, I'm getting no lights or any response to the downstairs unit. And so, okay, we got AC as the two insides. This breaker's off. I do not know what that goes to. All right, we will carry on here. Okay, got no LEDs. Again, we're trying to give it a signal and we got no response. like maybe the condensate pump float switch or something's open and that's what's keeping the unit from coming on go ahead and bypass that for right now you get the unit going then we'll have to rip the unit all apart to find the, the condensate pump in there and the float switch okay let's see how we make out here Yep. 
So the condensate pump up there has a float switch in it okay. and a safety uh -huh. switch. Okay. So, you know, if we're not pumping the water out, it doesn't want you to make a water mess into the building. So it shuts the unit off. Oh, I but see. for right now, let's get a little bit of heat going. We'll get her warmed up, make sure everything works. Then I'll, I'll get my stuff off the roof. I'll have to come back down here and take all this apart and find it. Usually they stuff them in here somewhere. I see. But let's let it go through a cycle and get cycled up and do some heating and get the chill off the, off the store here real quick. Right and then we will, uh, we will carry on here. Good deal. Yeah. All right, that one didn't, it didn't take me too long to figure that out. It wasn't throwing me a loop, but for a minute. You know, you get to working on so much stuff, your brain's got to kick back in and go, oh yeah, the old condensate pump with the float switch, right? And uh, that's what was keeping the unit off. Safety switch. Let's see. Condensate drain is dry. That's how they ran it. They ran it up here to this little barbed fitting and then out the PVC. That's what they did there. Oh yeah. We're heating the store up. Let's see how many amps a little two-toner pulls. This is in uh, probably high speed going for the gusto right here. 10 amps. So she's running, she's running on high for sure. And then my plan was to go ahead and button her up and uh, I got to take apart the downstairs unit and find that pump and the float switch. See if it has failed. That's what you want. You want the voltage dancing all over the place between S2 and S3. You don't want a steady voltage there when we're, when we're doing it. It's communicating, man. It's communicating. All right, so let me get this, uh, get, let me get my 10,000 screws back in here. And uh, we're just getting started. That's basically, now we know what the problem is, now we gotta get to the problem. And you guys know how it is, taking the covers off on those indoor units. cold here this morning. I think it got down to 35. Cold snap going through after we had the endless summer for winter. You get right in front of this coil right here right now in heating mode. That'll cool you off. Some good, uh, good chill coming out of there. I always want to make sure you get all the screws back in. Puzzle. You gotta, you gotta play with the puzzle, man. The pieces of the puzzle. You guys, think 10 amps for two tons? That's not bad, huh? On high heat, high heating mode. Get that pushed up, down, down up without the bottoms popping out. That's the trick. There it went. Little game you gotta play with these things. 
how they all, the panels interlock. Okay. Looks like the installer had a little blood action, huh? Not me today. Oh shit, it was me. <laughs> God dang it, Dave. Every time. I'm heating the store up right now. Got the unit running. Get a little bit of heat in the restaurant. Then we'll go ahead and kill power and we'll take the indoor cover off. And on the bottom there, you know, if you're facing the indoor coil, the line set's going to the right. Uh, right down in there should be the uh, the pump and the float switch. Usually the float, it'll, they'll get full of scuzz. Uh, and usually you can clean them out and they'll reset. So there should be a float switch in there and a safety. Uh, or it could be one switch that has both uh, you know, to turn it on and off and also as a safety to shut the machine off if it stays up. We'll see when we get inside of it. The Siemens uh, disconnect is pretty cool. Fuse disconnect with GFI switch built in for service. I like that. That was really nice. Um, you don't see those a lot around here, but that is a nice little setup. Look at that. So you got to run your 240 up and then a 110 circuit. And you got a GFIC. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. A supply of air temperature of 123 degrees. That's really good. That's as hot as a gas furnace. Of course, it won't be that hot when it's super cold outside, but it's really good. All right, here's the condensate pump. I'm gonna let that hang down there like that. This was the float. That goes connected to the condensate pump. We could check the LEDs on it. I could wire, I got it unwired right now. We'll wire it back up. Now that one sits in there like this. Uh, what I noticed is, I'll take this off. One of the probes looks pretty scaled up. I think one of the probes got scaled up. That probe right there. This one. I'm gonna shine them all up and see what happens. Got the probes cleaned. I got it rewired. Let's power this up and we'll check our LEDs. Power run alarm. All right, so all the checking with the wiring and the switch leg. The issue is in the pump. So I gotta get a new pump. I might also get a new switch because this switch was already hammered. So Clearview Mini, new pump, new switch. That's where we're at. I think I'm gonna run it bypassed and for heating only. And the customer's okay with that. So let me get this all back together.